and welcome to the Business Spotlight. It's your host, Patrick Dewar. I have a fabulous show today. I, I'm my guest. I met him actually recently. Uh, Paul Southen is the uh, co host of the Drew Pearson Show, and I guess he produces it and does a lot of other work in that area as well. He's been an entrepreneur and a videographer, so to speak, a video interviewer for a number of years. One of the things that's been really exciting is to see how he's been able to interview some of the, what I'll call, some of the greatest icons of our age, uh, whether it be Tom uh, Cruise, um, Harrison Ford, uh, I'm trying to think of Willie Nelson. There's so many that he's, he's been able to actually sit down with, interview, and bring some of the brightest uh, moments to recorded history is what I'd say, just because these guys have established so much of, well, my generation. And one of the fun things about Paul, thank you for being on the show. Uh, thank you for having me. Is that he's of the, what I'll call the Gen X generation. And, and uh, it's, it's great to, to meet, you know, have the, like we jokingly said before the show, the, the, uh, the, the battle of the, the uh, generations of boomers and Xers. But, uh, but you've made a huge impact and you touched some of the brightest minds. How did you do that? You know, I kind of went about it on my own path, for better or for worse. Um, it, it all started in a broadcasting class in high school uh, on accident uh, when, when a teacher assigned me to do my final project to interview bands. And what I ended up doing was going to all the clubs in downtown Philadelphia, knocking on the back door, knocking on bus doors, and asking, you know, with this giant camera and asking if I could interview these bands. And, you know, so what I did is I came back with this project uh, that was cut together with, you know, a lot of uh, bands that I looked up to just giving me a chance to talk to them uh, for no good reason other than they probably felt bad for me. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, and I put together this thing and the teacher and his, you know, wonderfully gruff self said, that's not what I meant. I meant bands in the school. And, you know, he, he goes, but good job. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just realizing that I was on to something, and I had a lot of fun doing it. I mean, here I was in high school at some of the best clubs in the city, hanging out with the coolest bands. And then, you know, just really, it's kind of like the film Almost Famous. You know, they just kind of took me under their wing and said, hey, you ever seen the inside of a bus? No. Hey, have you ever seen the, you know, have you ever been backstage? No. And, you know, it's those kind of things that were just kind of priceless moments. And I figured out how to carry that on throughout college. And then I started doing it on my own. I started my own uh, business called Dallas Music Guide, which um, uh, expanded into 10 other cities uh, for a series of city music guides that was uh, bought out by a company. And uh, it's, it's, been, it's been a pretty exciting ride. I've gone on to edit for and write for several magazines that I personally read. So I don't know, I have a lot of fun doing it. And, and one of the coolest things about your journey is that you do what you love to do, don't you? Oh, yeah, it's great. And, you know, and sometimes when I tell people, you know, here's a funny thing. So one of the things, one of the many things I do is I do travel writing. And I'm a uh, travel editor for a magazine called Scoreboard. And what I do is I go to all these great resorts, kind of all in different parts of the world, and I write about how nice they are. It seems silly that they even would need somebody to do this. And, they, and they actually pay you to go do this? Yeah, isn't that crazy? It's kind of like a free vacation. You can't really look at it for the money. Yeah. Because... All I heard was I got paid to go on vacation. <laughs> right. So this is when you know you're, you're on to something, good or bad, when the TSA questions you about this. So I'm coming back from the Cayman Islands, which notoriously, you know, there's, there's some maybe suspect things going on there and financially. And they said, well, what were you doing there? I said, well, the uh, Ritz-Carlton and the Grand Cayman asked me to come and write something, uh, something about them. And, and he, he goes, okay, let me get this straight. You flew in to just to write about how great the Ritz-Carlton and the Grand Cayman is? I said, yep. And he's stamped and let me move on. And it was almost like <laughs> how do he, I get that job? <laughs> it's almost like he didn't believe me. And and I think you know when I explain to people that basically I travel around the world, write about great places, and interview really interesting people that you've probably heard of most of them. Um, and um, you know, surrounded by beautiful things and beautiful people, that's that's pretty lucky. And how can you not love it? One of the things that I was, I, I'm so thrilled about, uh, you know, our chance encounter and and, mm -hmm. and meeting you, and is that, you know, you had an, a moment when it was really time to, um, uh, it, it, you had to. 
decide what you really wanted to be when you grew up. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden things changed and you really began to, to, to go with your passion. So I know that, that uh, you know, in this show we're going to talk more about the, the journey that you've had, mm -hmm. the people that you've interviewed, the ways that you have uh, created um, what you do. do. Is there a, a favorite interview that you want to talk about as we go on? You know, uh, one of my favorite people to interview, I've interviewed him a couple times, is Tom Cruise. And just because he's so laser focused and he's so good, it's like the, if you were to define what a movie star is and what they should be, it'd probably be him or John Travolta. I mean, those guys are just, they're right there with you. Like, especially Tom Cruise. When you're asking him a question, he's looking at you in the eye and he's using your name and he's, he's just really, you, nothing else is going on any of these lights the cameras that's not his focus he's focused on you that's and he good. thanks you for coming I and, and I'm having to focus on the fact that we've got to take a break oh. and uh, so with that this is a business spotlight Paul Southen's my guest and I just want to encourage you to stick around because Paul has some really good more stories of how he's changed um, it created his life the way he wants to and we'll be right back Welcome back to the Business Spotlight. My guest today is Paul Salfin, and what, one of the things that we're talking about is how he's been able to interview some of the greatest, what I'll call minds and celebrities of our age. If you think about um, Harrison Ford or, uh, and all of the things that he he's been able to, in a sense, I'll say teach uh, in, the, in the shows that he's been in, involved in, or Tom Cruise or Willie Nelson, or some of the other greats that you could that uh, are out there, uh, Will Smith. Paul's been able to interview them. So as we go, you know, really back into into this interview, um, I want to know how um, how you've created what you've you've done. In other words, what I'm asking is what you're doing to create this incredible success for yourself. Well, I've I've kind of done it all my own way. And I don't know if it's necessarily the right way. I've done it all in a kamikaze way. I don't have a journalism degree. I don't have an English degree. This is not what I'm supposed to be doing on paper, but it's what I enjoy doing. It's kind of what I grew up seeing. My, my father, actually, uh, among other things, is, uh, is a film critic. And you know he's done interviews. So I've watched this go on a lot. And he's a wonderful public speaker. So uh, I've just kind of stumbled into it. Uh, like I told you with uh, the high school story and then going in through college and then starting my own business and that caused the attention of newspapers and magazines and even TV shows. So all of this was done in a completely non-traditional path. So it's hard for me to say if it's right or wrong but it's worked out well for me and like I said I have probably the best job of, of anybody I know. May not be the most lucrative but it's the best job. How, how are you attracting the people that you're interviewing? Well I think when you do these interviews, it just attracts the other ones. It's kind of like when, you know, I can see the montage go up. And basically, you look at that stuff and you figure, okay, well, you know, you think about the way the publicists look at it or the agents, and they go, okay, well, you've interviewed, you know, all these other great people. You're fine. And it's kind of, uh, it, it depends on what publication you're doing it for, uh, what outlet you're doing it for, and then what, um, you know, what you can offer them. So, so they see that you do all this stuff and they're like oh yeah you're fine <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like once you pass the test then uh, then you've you've got acceptance in it, that in that world so to speak that's a funny story kind of along those lines of a guy that wanted to borrow money from like Rockefeller and, and he said well hold on a second just walk next to me hold on to my arm and we'll walk across with we'll his chat across the floor of the stock exchange and he walked back and he says afterwards people will run to you and they'll loan you money because of who you've already been around. Is that what I'm hearing? Sure, I would say about 95% of the work I get, I don't get from 
applying for things or going to interview with people or that kind of stuff. It's more that, uh, honestly, social media is a big part of it. People see this stuff and they see, oh, here's you with Bill Clinton, here's you with George Bush, here's, and they don't know the context of it, but they just see that and they, they know that I have something good going on and they want to be a part of it and they want me to bring that to their business. So as a consultant, it's probably helped me the most. That's really good. Well, Mark Hardy, back on the air. Uh, so, so glad to have you here, PR specialist. One of the reasons why you're on is to talk about, you know, how, how the guest is always in the media mm -hmm. and, and then how they can get more. So. Right. Well, you know, one of the questions as I was listening to you talk, Paul, is, you know, just like this show where Pat is making you the star, you make your interview subject the star. And, uh, you know, like Pat said in his introduction. So my question is, what do you do for yourself, for your brand, so people get to know you um, um, in terms of attracting those extra interviewers uh, or interviews or uh, you know articles or you know other clients because I know you do some consulting as well right well that's the hardest thing honestly because I'm so used to talking to other people about what makes them great why they're so good at what they do then when it comes time to talking about me sometimes it's like a deer in headlights I don't mind talking to you guys off the air about it or you know in a circle of friends or those kind of things but to try and promote myself that's not just my natural way of doing things so I have a great web guy by the name of Preston Howell and he has taught me to kind of come out of my shell in that way and just accept hey look you're good at what you do people like what you do they want to see it they want to hear from you and so he tries to make sure that I'm well indexed so if you google search my name you'll able to see a whole bunch of articles you can see videos you can see pictures and then that in turn attracts everything else and it's it's kind of like I was saying that that once people see that's what you do they want you to, they want you to do it for them. Absolutely. And, you know, one thing, um, I did Google you. Yeah. You know, we always like to Google the, the guests. And um, because with any business, and your business is you, your personality, what you bring to an interview. And one of the things that I like to see is a clean reputation when somebody Googles you know, a name or a company on the first page. So I looked through the first page. I didn't see any incriminating photos, <laughs> you know, Facebook shots or anything. I saw all your social media channels and everything aligned. So there isn't going to be something incongruent when somebody looks and says, hey, what, what's this story? I, Paul's a great guy, but I'm seeing this weird thing online. So what you're telling me, that is not accidental. Oh, no. I, well, thankfully, <clears throat> I've never been arrested for anything. And <laughs> I, I'm not in any trouble for anything that I know of, so I don't really have anything to hide. But you want to make sure that the best stuff comes up, and if that, you know, if that means hiring a good web guy to help you out with that. But naturally, I think you should be able to naturally be indexed well. So I think, you know, at, as best you could do that. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much. We're ending up this segment. This is the Business Spotlight. I'm Pat Dewar, Paul Salpin's my guest. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Business Spotlight. My guest today is Paul Salfin. Paul is a, uh, a, a man that's been able to interview some of the greatest uh, folks that I think I've ever seen on the big screen, uh, whether it be Harrison Ford, Tom Cruise, uh, Angelina Jolie, Will Smith. I mean, the, the list goes on and on, and he's been able to have their attention and, and really uh, share their story with uh, the world. So, Paul, thank you so much for being on the air again. Thank you for having me on. So I, I want to get into one of the one of the ideal things I want to get into is like um, your ideal client, who you're looking to talk to, and then one of the things that I want to integrate in there is is how you use social media, which I think is part of your, your process already. Because I know we've got Kathy Brandon; she's a social media guru. So, how sure. are you attracting? Well, uh, who are you attracting? I should say, who are you trying to attract? Well, I guess it, it depends because I do such a wide variety of things. I mean, I, I was just explaining that, that my schedule in a day doesn't make sense to anyone, including me. I mean, it, it, it ranges from I um, 
like right right after this, I'm going to consult with one of my clients, Winston Supper Club, is a nightclub downtown. And following that, I've got a, a planning meeting for an app company that I've launched. And then I've got to go work on a couple of interviews that I've done. And uh, I'm an editor for Flavor Pill, so I've got to put in pics uh, for that website, and then I've got to write an article for Scoreboard, which is a sports magazine, and then I have to do some planning for the Drew Pearson show. And so none okay, of that's it... ended tomorrow afternoon already. You right. haven't slept yet. Right. <laughs> and uh, I'm off to Sundance uh, Film Festival this weekend, and then the following weekends are completely booked with, uh, let's see, we've got... Um, the Super Bowl next weekend that I'm going to, and then the uh, Grammys, and then All-Star Weekend. So nice. it's, uh, it's all fun stuff. It's all great stuff, but <clears throat> it's, all, it's all work, too. And uh, it's all so varied. And now that we're so mobile, I can work from anywhere. But that goes into the social media thing, because part of it is people will see these things. They'll see that I'm on the TV show today. They'll see that, um, that I'm going to be doing a, a really great interview on Thursday with the stars of Warm Bodies. And then they'll see that I'm at Sundance. And then they'll see, and those kind of things, people go, okay, this guy has something going on. So being well indexed in social media and making sure that every post ends up on Facebook and on Twitter and on Tumblr and Instagram and wherever else it needs to end up, those are the important things. I mean, I can't stress to you how much, even if you don't understand it, even if you don't feel like you really care about it, it's important. That is absolutely true. Kathy? Well, and, and I'm excited to meet you, Paul. I really like the way you handle the interviews with oh, the celebrities. You. I really enjoy your personality. You're very real. What I got from, from looking at you online and looking at your videos is I didn't get to see enough Paul. I would watch your videos, like with Eva Mendez. Mm -hmm. I watched your video, and I got to the end of the video, and I'm a huge fan of her, so mm -hmm. it was a really sweet interview. I got to the interview, and I wanted more Paul. I had enough of, and, and no disrespect, but it was a great interview. So by the in, end of the interview, I was satiated with the star. I wasn't satiated with enough Paul. Mm. And then I went to your Facebook, and... There's more than enough. <laughs> There's a lot of Paul there that's just awesome and wonderful and all that. Um, but still, your face on video. I got mm -hmm. the pleasure of seeing you speak last week. And, and then I watched your video. Um, and I, I really like who you are on film, who you are on the camera. And I'd like to see more of that. And that's the only thing that I actually saw that was missing is we just want more of you. Yeah. That's one thing the producer of the Drew Pearson show, mm -hmm. Tom Stokes, he's... He's really sort of hammered that into me because, again, I'm not a natural, mm -hmm. uh, I don't try and push myself out there. That do, that's right. not what I wake up and think about. Right. But it's something I've had to adapt to. And mm -hmm. that's one of the things he, you know, he keeps trying to, to tell me is that there needs to be more of you. You need to, mm -hmm. you know, why haven't you done this? Why haven't you done this? Why don't you do this? And, and you know, these are the kind of questions you need to ask yourself and go, mm -hmm. am I doing everything? Am I getting out there? Because, you know, if you're doing all you can and the results are the results, then okay. But if, if you're sitting there thinking, well, why don't you have your own show? If you're mm -hmm. so good at this, I'm right. like, well, I don't know. If, you, if you're answering most of these questions as I don't know, it's probably probably time to set mm -hmm. some goals or put some things in motion and mm -hmm. and it's it's harder than it looks and you also yeah. have to have that self-confidence I mean part of it you know part of me is that I just don't I don't really care to be on on film as much as right. my interview subjects I always tell right. the camera guy okay you know do an establishing shot so they know that we're in the same room and then the rest of the time focus on them it's mm -hmm. about them mm -hmm. and maybe maybe that's the wrong thing maybe there should be more back and forth but mm -hmm. I'm still learning every mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. I think it's really exciting. I like what you put out there. And, but that was the good news. That's the only thing that I see is missing. Mm -hmm. When I went and looked at your entire online footprint, and then I had the opportunity to hear you speak, and um, I just think that's all. We just want more Paul. <laughs> and so what you're doing on Facebook with your photos and your events, mm -hmm. you know, bring your camera. You know, maybe some, uh, maybe some behind the scenes. Sure some of that dialogue but that's it thank you so much yeah thank you I'll, I will certainly try and put myself out yeah. there a little bit more and inject a little bit more of maybe my personality yeah. into it I, yeah. I realize that there's uh, always always more stuff you can do to improve it's really funny because I, I so relate to this I mean I have a guest 
I make the show about the guest. Yes. It's not necessarily about what I'm doing, but it really is, you know, what are they doing to create such a, such uh, success mm -hmm. in the in the area, and that, that's the real secret to the the, the business spotlight is that it's, it's telling your story. If you're a business owner, telling your story in the marketplace and then publicizing it everywhere. If you want to be on the air, you should call us. I'm Pat Dewar. We'll be right back. And welcome back to the Business Spotlight. We've, we've really enjoyed a great show today. This is the fourth segment, and uh, this segment with Paul Selfin is going to talk more about really how to connect to him. Because it, we, we were choking at the beginning about the battle of the generations. Boomer, Xer, you know, he does, he does, we both do the same thing. We interview great people and make the, the, the light shine on them. The Business Spotlight is about the business owner being able to tell a story in the marketplace. It's Paul Self and literally telling uh, his story and making other people shine. I so appreciate that about you. And I appreciate your heart that you want to create, um, you want to do what you love to do always and you've created that. So as we go into this segment, I know one of the things I'm real thankful for, we got some video that you put together. We'll roll that at some point. But the, the big thing here is, you know, how can people connect to you? And then and when we, well, how can people connect to you? And what's the experience when they do? Well, part, part of uh, being well indexed is being easy to reach. And, and uh, hopefully I've done that. And I think uh, right below my shiny face, you'll be able to see there's uh, paulsalfin.com is the website, and I'm pretty sure I'm the only Paul Salfin out there. Actually, I shouldn't say that. There is uh, someone that I could possibly be related to in California that uh, we haven't quite figured that one out. But anyway, if you Google Paul Salfin, that's me. Uh, my website's paulsalfin.com. On Twitter, I'm at Paul Salfin. I'm on Facebook. I'm on every social media, LinkedIn, everything that you can think of. Emails paul at paulsalfin.com. I'm very easy to reach kind of inundated with a lot of stuff, so sometimes I might be slower to respond, but I do try and get back to absolutely everybody. I do, I get pitched so many things, but, um, but yeah, I love to, love to hear from everybody, especially if it's something nice. As we show this, let's go to the, the, the role here of, the, of his video, and, and tell us a little bit about what's happening here. These are interviews that you've been able to do. Sure, yeah, there's uh, Megan Fox and uh, Edward Norton, and, you know, a lot of these is ju are just me. Uh, what it is is um, I I've been told, once again, that I need to have more of me out there, more of a, a reel, so to speak. So a friend of mine helped me put together uh, this little thing, which has just clips of me talking to a bunch of people uh, along with different events that I've done. And uh, the biggest complaint that I've had is, well, you can't hear you. You can't hear these great questions I, and all your... And, and so if you see this video on YouTube, or um, you'll, what you'll notice is that it's just music in the background. So I'm actually actively working on one where you can see some questions and answers. But basically, this just kind of shows that, yeah, this is what I do. Because part of that is the legitimacy factor. People want to know that they can, they can put you in front of their talent, and they won't be embarrassed, and you're going to ask the right questions. And, you know, everybody have a good time. That's really good. I'm still wondering how you got uh, Chevy Chase to dance for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, we uh, were talking about, I think, doing the dance. And I said, well, I have only one move, and that's, a, that's my poor white guy dance. He said, oh, like this? And he actually did a dance. And he's kind of known for really being like a little stubborn and slightly humorous. And so to see him actually do his white guy dance was pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> I don't doubt. I know that, that as you look through that montage, there's so many uh, leaders in thought today and the way that you've been able to touch them. Um, in the next 10 years, who do you want to interview? You know, what's really nice is I've actually got myself down to a very, very small list. I think I had a list of a top five. And actually, one of them was Arnold Schwarzenegger. 
And uh, I recently got to talk to him, which was pretty cool, because part of it is he was on there because he's sort of, to me, the definition of the American dream. He came over not, you know, not even really fully capable of the language and, you know, started out as a bodybuilder and ended up being the biggest movie star in the world. And then, you know, uh, the governor and then back to being a movie star. He's pretty, still doing pretty it. Pretty amazing. And that's what I like is the, those really good stories. That's why I've liked talking to Richard Branson and people, people like that. But uh, on the very short list is uh, Steven Spielberg. I've never encountered him. And uh, the Dalai Lama, I think, would be really interesting to talk to. And a sitting president. Uh, I've been able to meet three presidents, but I've never actually sat down and interviewed um, a president. And I think that'd be really nice. And uh, you know, I'm sure there's there's a couple others, but I'm I'm just interested in people. I'm interested in their story, and if they have a good one, I want to hear it. That's really good. I know that that whenever you run into people that are being able to do what they really are designed to do, mm -hmm. you know. Um, that that makes all the difference. Uh, so I mean, I, I just commend you. I think it's so exciting to see what you're doing, to see the different aspects. Um, one more time, how can people connect to you? Yes, uh, they can reach out to me at paulsalfin.com. That's the website, or they can email me paul at paulsalfin.com, or they can find me under my name on Twitter, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, or or any way they'd like to, or they can just uh, stop me on the street. Or <laughs> they don't have to go through a, a, an army of gatekeepers. So. Oh, no, no. They just have to get through an, an army of, of, of emails that I've yet to read. <laughs> so it's, it's, it, you're in, they're in line, but you'll get to them. Oh, of course, yeah. It's more of a time management thing than anything. I think I'm more of a management problem, which makes me more of an entrepreneur than anything. So, um, but yeah, I, uh, I, I love to hear from people. Like I said, especially if it's good stuff. I, I, I love it. I know that as we're, we're finishing this show, Paul, thank you so very much. It's an honor to meet thank you. you. I know you'll probably see, meet and talk to those people that you had on that list. Um, I'd like to just follow all the interviews you've already done and do those. Uh, but uh, this is the Business Spotlight. I'm Patrick Dewar. Uh, if you're a business owner and you're in the Dallas, Fort Worth, or the Houston area, then uh, give me a call. Um, you can contact me. My cell phone is actually on the screen. Call me, and we'll uh, find a way to, to interview you and get you to tell your story and then show you how you can populate kind of the universe with uh, your story, whether it be on uh, the, the Internet, social media. I know that we even have a six-week campaign where we're promoting the guest for the rest of uh, for that time period. Again, we'll talk to you next week. I used to say same bad time. See you then.